Hey, Chad. Yeah. Knock, knock. Uh, who's there? Hammond. <laughs> Hammond who? Hammond cheese. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, hey, how about this one? What do you get when you mix a mouse and Count Dracula? Uh, I don't know, but I think I've heard this one before. Count Mousula. That dude, that's. So <laughs> that All right, I got. One. I, I got one. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. All right, this is my favorite yeah. knock knock joke. Yeah. Uh, say knock knock. Knock knock. Who's there? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, man. It like left me like yeah, yeah. I'm I'm pausing like what? What am I supposed to do next? Welcome. You're listening to Paleo Cheese Podcast, Episode 17, Part Two. Funny names and it follows with Max Booth the Third. Oh yeah, dude. That Count Mouchula joke. You know. You know, we're trying to come up with jokes, dude, about Dr. Acula. Yeah. Um, you know, because we, we, my kids, man, when we would wake up early in the morning, it was still dark outside, going to school, driving them to school. There was this, uh, these, this billboard, and the guy, it's one of these doctors, but the doctor, he just, something about him, dude, he just didn't look right. You know, like something's messed up, dude. He looks dark and pretty creepy. <laughs> Something. I'm like, would you go with that guy? And they're like, no. They're like, he looks like Count Dracula. And I'm like, he is Dr. Acula. <laughs> so it turned into this big stupid joke about Dr. Acula. Dude, we have I'm a like, Dr. Frankenstein here. Like legit. What? In, in uh, is it Bellevue? Yeah, Dr. Frankenstein. No. Yeah. I don't know That's if his real name is Frankenstein. Yeah, I don't know if he's still practicing, but he was in the, in the, like the 90s. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I feel like if your last name is Frankenstein, that's the only have occupation. To yeah. yeah, you have you to have go to med be. school. Yeah. yeah, you absolutely have to. E- even to just be like, just for that one day where you kind yeah. of say, you know, just that that first moment, I'm Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. And then you're Bye. like, oh man, it took me six years of college just so I could say that once. Dude, that's like, that's like, one of those names, man, that you know you deal with people giggling every time. Like that one guy whose name is Dick Sweat. <laughs> like oh, that man, guy. Horrible. Dude, I've, yeah, had a, every, I've had a case of that. <laughs> dude, that guy, he's he was a politician of some kind. And he's every election year where it's, you know, whether a midterm or a general or anything like that. Um, they're always wanting his endorsement. He's a Democrat. And so every single election year, man, it will it will go on Twitter. It trends on Twitter, and it just says "Dick Sweat." It's W. It, it's S W E T. And so it's like you know, and everybody's like, "What?" And you go on there, and they're like, "I'm so proud to get the endorsement of Dick Sweat." And everybody's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazing in this day and age. Well, for the last like 30, 40 years. If your name is Dick and you were born that way, that you would even go by that anymore. It's yeah, weird. I do some it, people, yeah. do, some people go by Rick or Richard. I'd yeah. be a Dick. Yeah <laughs> my my biological father's name was Dick Johnson, so he had a double. Hell yeah, he had that's, a, a, that's a name. <laughs> that's a porno name right there. I wish I was a Dick Johnson. Dick Johnson. Dick Johnson. I I I. <laughs> yeah <laughs> spelled out <laughs> yeah of course exactly yeah like but those names kind of it seems like those names are going a little bit away you know like it's kind of like elmer you know uh Esther. yeah nobody's Although gonna my, name their kid dick anymore yeah nowadays but then again i mean they've kind of replaced that with other ones like um i don't want to bust on apple too much because i kind of you know it always reminds me of fiona apple a little bit you know, not as a first name, obviously, but then you got the one. What was what was the one? On the one hand, it was like the most creative thing in the world. On the other hand, I'm like, I would hate to be this person where their name is uh, Abyssity, but it's A B C D. Oh my goodness! Or A B C D oh Abyssity? Oh. No, and it's an E at the end. Obesity. Uh, uh, yeah, right. Is is that why? Is is that where you're no. saying that? Because it's uh, like obesity. No, it's just their name is their first name is A B C D E. That's how oh, you would spell I got it. You. 
Yeah, sometimes people yeah. try to get look at Elon Musk's kid's name. I don't know what that was his name. Um, I, I have to Google this. It's, it's like, like a, a, a much strange symbol or something. Yes. It's yeah, like, it's like a. It's like what's the name? Uh, name and his kid blanket. Yeah. No, this is worse. This is a. Uh, um, it's X and then the A A E thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then A. Uh, X11. One, one. I don't know if that's supposed to be 12 or what? Okay, yeah. say this again, man. I, I, <laughs> I'm i struggling I, to process this. <laughs> hang on. It, it says how it's pronounced. It's um, it's X and then that AE that's yeah, together. Yeah. It's yep. like one symbol kind of thing. Yep. And then A12. That's his name. A, 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 X Ash A12. And so you, what was uh, it? you pronounce it as a dick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you pronounce that for real? Like, how, how would you? It says on here uh, the the name is pronounced X Ash A twelve. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? What? Dude, that is the worst thing I've ever for, heard. For, <laughs> for, such a, for such a good brain, uh, you think that you could. Uh, have enough brains to maybe not name your kids something like that yeah kids who's gonna who's gonna keep it i mean i guess if they just go by ash or something yeah, you know, yeah. like and he's ash. like well yeah that's not actually my real full full name um <laughs> what's your full name oh it's got 12 in it <laughs> <What>? <laughs> oh man yeah that's horrible but that's just whack okay. out okay yeah so we are gonna be talking about it follows um it's a elevated horror film mm -hmm. uh yeah. a coming of age horror movie about a girl who gets an std that no gynecologist can cure and as a result <laughs> <laughs> as a result she she attracts streakers who want to bend her legs backward <laughs> it uh yeah. is directed by david robert mitchell it's written by david robert mitchell and stars kids with names i'm not even sure how to pronounce like mayaka and here and ash x12 <laughs> yeah. that in there. ash x12 <laughs> yeah who did he no, play again was he the std yeah yes. 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 yes good answer okay and his dad uh, is the dick <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie that uh max picked gave us three all of them good ones but this was uh one that we were going to be talking about anyway because Jeremiah saw it for the first time recently. I've seen it three and a half times, I think. A half. Um, yes. And, of course, I've seen the the tall man in the hallway a clip at least 40, 50 times. Yeah, dude. Did you see it half of the time because you it was during one of your naps? <laughs> no. No, I think it's when... Uh, I, I think my, my son had a friend over. And so... I always want to, if, if I know one of my kids is watching a horror movie and I'm not really in the mood to watch it, but I've seen it, I always want to be there when they're, you know, like they get nervous if I'm in the room because they know that something's going to happen and they're going to get freaked out. They're like, what are you doing here, dad? Get out of here. What's going <laughs> to yeah. happen? Because they know I want to see their, the look on their yeah. face and, and uh, yeah. see them get freaked out. So that was kind of like that, the half, I guess. Yeah, this but, is my first time seeing it. And dude, I even made a review. I've got to edit that bugger now. You mean the reaction video? A rea I'm so sorry. Yes. Yeah, I made a reaction yeah. video. Yeah. And so I and it was totally spooky. And it's funny because when I started watching it right away, I wasn't it, it I wasn't entirely sure about the music. Like in the very, very, very beginning. I mean, I, I liked it, but it was different. I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. But then as it went on, man, it turned into this thing where I'm like, this is the greatest soundtrack I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> and, I just, and it was like every time that music was coming, man, I'm like, wow. Yeah. I mean, it totally freaked me out, man. Yes, I love I, I, it. Was it Disaster Piece, I think? Yeah, Disaster Piece. Yeah, yeah Disaster Piece. Um, yeah, look yeah, at that. Oh. There, yeah, there you go. That's a good one to have on vinyl, man. Yeah, yes. I love it. Heck yeah, yes, that's some good writing music. Uh, I love that soundtrack. What's on the cover of that? It, and for, for the listeners, he just flashed his vinyl. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, woman's face. Did it come with like other stuff inside, or is it just kind of? 
I forget. It's been a while. No. It came with it came with a condom. It did come with a condom. It was a it had a hole poked into it, and now my wife. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> now Max has got to move all the time. <laughs> they keep finding me. <laughs> In my life, it's just some kid. Dad. So, oh, oh man. <laughs> so Matt, Max, why did you why did you pick this movie to discuss? What what obviously you like it? What what is it that you like about I it love, so much? Uh, I love everything about it. I think it might be. In this genre, the best movie of the last decade, like I consider it most likely the number one spot. I the soundtrack, as was mentioned, is uh, phenomenal. I love writing to it. I uh, love watching it and listening to the soundtrack as the movie plays. I think the plot is really a minimalist, and I like that. It doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, focus too heavily on making a long and uh, uh, developed plot. It's pretty simple. And the shots are great. Everything looks great. I love uh, all of it. I mean, there's nothing I don't like about it. Yeah, I'm with you on all of them, man. I, you know, when I first saw it, um, it was a couple years ago, and I thought this is the best movie I've seen in best horror movie I've seen in uh, at least a decade. Yeah, and and then I saw Hereditary, and I thought, man, this might take number one. And then I, I've seen Hereditary, I think, three times now. And while it's an incredible movie and I absolutely love it, um, it hits me at a different level. It's much more of a disturbing um, yeah. something that has more like impact on me psychologically, whereas <clears throat> It Follows is more of a, a really fun ride. And so it's hard for me to... Um, to, to which one I like best, but when I watch it, I watched it follows again today in preparation for this. And I, I might like it more than hereditary. Mm -hmm. I, I can't be sure, but those two movies, as far as horror goes, yeah, they're, they're the best two horror films that I've seen in, in at least 10 or 15 years. I think. If you guys had this uh, disease, do you think you could easily just walk away from it all the time? Like, would it be that much of an issue? Um, Easily walk away from it. It's just but walking. You, yeah, but if you sleep, though, you know, I mean, the muggers are going to be coming up to your room, like, while you're sleeping. Yeah. You know, they could come up behind you, and they're all creeping, like that old lady and stuff, and you just... It I mean, would become like, like a, a ritual. It would become like a ritual. Like, you knew, you would know, you probably have, like, a, what are those Fitbits, where you would yeah. be like, oh, let's see, I'm... Now I'm two hours away in this other city, so I've got, let's see... I've got a, you know, and you end up with two houses, my vacation home, uh, two hours away. And then, so, you know, you've got two hours. Okay. You, you've got about two weeks to stay here. Yeah. Three, so three weeks to stay here. We and never just... see it. Like we never see it change, right? It always changes yeah. off camera. So do you think you could like attach some type of tracking device to it? So you would <laughs> always know where it's at. Well, but that change when it changed shape. That's a good question because you never know. I mean, you don't know. Yeah, that is a good question. You know how? Yeah, exactly. How does that? How does that happen? But it, I mean, if you if you could go and just you know, even if you were homeless for uh, um, five days, say, look, I'm going to drive to California. You know, I'm going to go to San Francisco and live in the homeless community there, which is like half the city right now, and I'm going to live there. And then after a number of days or weeks or whatever, I'm going to be like, I'm just going right back to my, my place over back in Michigan. <laughs> and because then that thing's going, just walking a long ways away. Yeah. But you'd have Which, to, you'd have to wait for it. I think. Yeah. Or, you'd have to wait. Yeah. You'd have to wait or else you don't, I mean, it would just turn around. Yeah. yeah. You know, it'd yeah, be like, Oh, well, but, but even then, I mean, it's like, you're keeping it halfway between, but if it got know, held up by a train, and it was closer to <laughs> Michigan than it was to California, then you, your math will get all kinds of screwed up and you'd end up dead with your legs bent backwards. That was gross, by the way. That it was, was awesome. It, it was, was awesome. I knew you'd love that, you sicko. I knew it. <laughs> when I saw that, I'm like, dude, I bet you Chad's just smiling ear to ear right now. He's like, yes. He's like, yeah. you know, compound fracture. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what? Pretty much. You know, that would suck as a job, though. Like, you clock in for the day, and the only duty you have is just to find this Filson who recently had sex and kill them. And they just keep leaving, and for some reason, you have to walk slowly. And you get all the way to the, the fucking state they fled to just to realize they went back to where you began. That'd be awful. Yeah, but it's in the end, it's kind of interesting, because, like, monogamy wins. 
Like there, yeah. the, the the answer is <laughs> it is the answer. And isn't this true of like a lot of stuff with horror? Like you see these horror movies, and the people that are you know the the people that are kind of throwing it all over the place. Those people end up dying. <laughs> they get killed and stalked by the bad guy, and he takes them out. And the person who's you know more bashful and kind of you know. Uh, keeping things close, <laughs> the two shoes. Wearing, so wearing the chastity belt, the metal chastity belt, and stuff. That they're the ones, and the monogamy. They're just passing back and forth, and they got two eyes on the prize, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, saying like we're we're looking out for each other, and so it's, I don't know. Yeah, isn't that how they kind of? Isn't it the opposite in this movie almost? Because the way to survive is to go fuck somebody. Yeah, but if you're a virgin, if you're even not down with that, then you, yeah. you you're not going to get killed. Is what That's he's saying. True. Unless yeah. you're friends with somebody. I mean, that one dude got knocked back by the, <laughs> they had the lawn chair. He got tore up a little bit. So, I mean, you could, you know, potentially yeah. get taken out by the invisible if you're standing in the way. Imagine just, being a villager and then still getting killed by the fuck demon. That'd be <laughs> awful. What a that way would to not go. be a good story to tell. That That would not be. Yeah. Yeah, because then there's. There's no, there's no redemption. It's like, oh man, and I didn't even, I didn't even get laid, and I, I'm now I'm dead. Let me ask you guys a question. How exactly is this passed on? Is it does ejaculation have to happen? That's a good question because yeah. I, I also wondered, and I didn't notice this <laughs> the first two times I saw this, but there's a yeah. scene where they go to the, um, where the to the guy's apartment. They're looking for the guy, and he's left his apartment. And now he's living with his mom. You guys know what I'm talking about? His windows yeah. are all boarded up. The guy who gave her the the thing in the first place. Yeah. And they go up in the attic, and it's like this shrine the for everywhere. masturbation. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. like the shrine for masturbation. Yeah, there's yeah. a bed, and then there's magazines which are new. I mean, the covers they're they're, new, they're, they're newer magazines. Mm -hmm. And then there's yeah tissues all over, and it's like the guy was. Uh, I, I I was wondering was he trying to like manually treat his you know and just trying to did he think that he could get rid of it like doing this a dick exorcism <laughs> yeah I, I thought that too like what if you like did it with a grapefruit would the demon like be after that fruit that's the way i do it like like uh what, what is the name of that movie man is american pie what is it yeah, yeah 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 i'm being like based on the pie Make yeah, and just say, well, there it goes. And it's like, well, you know, but then it's coming after you. It goes and it eats yeah, but, the pie, and then yeah, it's coming after you. It's going to eat the tangerine or whatever, the grapefruit, you know, the uh, Santa melon, and okay. then it's coming after you. Stick with me now. So you, you do the thing to the pie. You leave it in the pie. The, de the fuck demon, it eats that pie. Is that considered some type of sexual act? act? It's just eight. <laughs> And it's self-destructing. I jizz. And now it's like, oh, well, no. He, now I have not, to kill myself. That's how you get rid not, of it. But he's not eating them. He's just breaking their legs and, and whatnot. Yeah, but if, if he found a delicious pie, he might eat it. <laughs> there was a there was a, a, a quote that the chick... I didn't really pay attention. I should have, to What the girl was reading out of her little e-reader. Yeah, the clam book. Yeah. And there it was, was awesome. Quote, yeah, yeah. There was a quote in there that she said that... that made me wonder if it was trying to explain what is happening. And I, I, I should have wrote it down, but it had something to do with losing one's soul. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think she was reading it when she was in the hospital. Yeah, that it is. It's Dostoevsky. It says, it, I, I wrote it down. It's right here. It says when there's torture, there's pain and wounds, physical agony, and all this distracts the mind from mental suffering so that one is tormented by the wounds until the moment of death. And the most terrible agony may not be in the wounds themselves, but in knowing for certain that within an hour, then within 10 minutes, then within half a minute, now at this very instant, your soul will leave your body and you will no longer be a person. And that this is certain. The worst thing is that it is certain. Yeah. And I, th yeah. I think that is trying to kind of cryptically explain some of this. Yeah. It's death. I mean, and that's why that's why people were like, look, you know, it's a lot of people talk about STDs and all this, but it's really death, you know, and that's what that's what I believe the director even said that that it was kind of, you know, about that. Yes, but it's I mean, it's at least an ST. It is sexually sexually transmitted. Well, wouldn't it be 
you know, and I, I don't know enough about this to go really deep into this or anything, but, you know, from a Freudian perspective, the idea that there's a kind of awareness of death and what we are when we reach that age where we actually have sex, right? And that when that happens, there's a, a kind of thing internally. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, listeners can let me know and, like a, and clarify that. But yeah, like that there's... Snake, like a snake uh, shedding its skin and becoming a new snake. Yeah, and that that's when they when people say, well, yeah, they lose their innocence, right? We have different different terms we use for what goes on in that transitional period of life. You become a man. Well, it's also, you know, they, they used to say, oh, you become a man or this is you become a woman or whatever. It, it, it was tethered to ceremonies like like marriage and things like that, that are basically the idea is not only that you are maturing and moving to another phase in a process that ends in death. But with marriage in particular, that it's it's a ceremony that not only are you an adult, but that you are doing something that is going to recreate more life because you're going to die. And that the ones that remain will continue, but you will die. That is certain. <laughs> and so it made it made me wonder, you know, it made me wonder if that's kind of what's meant by that and why they tethered it with with sex and the self-awareness of who we are and what we are in a Freudian sense um, in the movie. I might be way off though, man. I, I, it sounds good to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sounds convincing. <laughs> you, uh, you convinced me. I'm with you. Yeah, It's over. That's it. That's, it. That's the whole movie. It's done. <laughs> the, the first time I saw it, I, I immediately um, had some, because the movie, what's that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> the, the, the movie uh i mean right off the bat it starts right away and you absolutely have to know what's happening because uh -huh. you have no clue yeah and i usually try not to watch trailers or even read uh synopses of things um because it it always makes the book or the or the, the movie um that much better and um because then you're in for a real ride you you have no idea um what to expect or, or what what exactly is going on but I knew right away that I was enjoying because I could tell it has a very indie feel um, uh, that that you can feel more so in after the beach scene where the girl's on the beach and it starts with a girl in the swimming pool. That was so very indie, uh, just the camera work and the dialogue and the focus on seemingly um, unimportant things like her playing in the water, um, stuff like that. And I also love any movie that's kind of like parentless. I mean, there were parents around, but they were just like they were in the shadows, you know. Yeah. And and uh, actually, there weren't any uh, dads around except for maybe at the very beginning. But I, I love that man. It's like Charlie Brown, you know. The, the you you get to just let these watch these kids do their thing without parents, you know, getting involved in. Um, and I don't need any kind of explanation for that, you know. Like, well, they're letting this guy stay the night there and. Where is she at? Where are their parents? And how come they're not? I like it like that. That they're not around. I've heard that. I've heard a, an analysis. I've read uh, an analysis of the film that talks about, you know, whenever um, that it's about the, the death of the dad. In other words, the dad is either dead or something like that. And you know, I might be wrong. I've only I've seen it twice, um, mm -hmm. but I didn't pay attention to that dynamic of it because it's so easy to they're not they don't play a role the parents right yeah and but that if, if they whenever they do um drinking is involved right whenever there's mentioned there's a kind of sadness and a depression that's involved in that i hadn't thought about that at all but yeah that's a good point i uh i on this recent watch it's only when i uh realized that uh there's no uh, appearance and like presence almost through the whole film. And I thought that was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Really uh, chilly brownish. Yeah. I like that. I like that quite a bit, but I, there, there's one thing that I still can't figure out uh, even after the third and a half watch or whatever. And that's when the girl, you know, the first time I was watching it, you see the girl and she's like, Oh, she's going to go bang these three dudes on the boat. Yeah. And it's very clear that that's what she's going to do. She takes off her thing and she's going to swim it out there. And then it goes to another scene. So you, you've established that she did this thing, but then it ignores that completely. Um, 
and then it goes and she's having a conversation with the boy who really likes her and um he's he's saying well why why didn't you um you know we we could do it i like you you know so it's like killing two birds with one stone here and she's like no um he's like well you chose that guy and she's like yeah i shouldn't have and in in they allude to the fact that she she still has this but so i don't understand the reason for that scene because she didn't sleep with those guys on the boat i don't know that's a good point maybe maybe did she or didn't she she didn't I don't, I don't think she did unless she did and they fucking died immediately yeah <laughs> that's what i was thinking too. <laughs> they just drown in that boat. she didn't say anything and they all yeah the thing came out there and just took them out in the boat it seems almost like the deleted scene or something because the pa- it, it kind of cuts away and we don't talk about it again, do we? Yeah, no. It, it's, that's why I don't understand why it was in there at all. Maybe yeah. just to give the audience like the idea that she considered it because that is something the audience would be like, well, why doesn't she just go fuck some strange random person? It was yeah. considering it, but we need more of a grasp on what the final decision is because we don't quite get that. When I was watching it, I thought you know, it would make much more sense if she didn't get into the water and then be like, you know, mm-hmm. start swimming out there and then it cuts to another scene. Like if, yeah. if it just showed her still on the beach looking at these three dudes listening to the rock music and you're left with, you know, her contemplation rather yeah. than her post decision to, to swim out there. Right. So Agreed. yeah. I didn't, yeah. It does feel like there might be a, a deleted scene. Maybe they deleted the scene where the, the, the thing went out there and just destroyed those guys right off the bat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm on the beach already. I'm <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and I was going to say just, just for reference, it was uh, MJ pack at creepy catalog.com. Um, was saying that you never see Jay's mom's face in full focus. Mom is always day drinking. And one fan theory is that Jay's father killed himself. And that's the reason why the mom is still despondent. It's a fan theory. That's out. Yeah. You know, throw, throw it, throwing it out there. Right. People can debate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it were to uh, tie into the theme of the movie, he would have died having too much sex. <laughs> well, and there was some messed up stuff, you know, the, uh, there was another one that was talking about the death of the father, right? In the movie, yeah. even that he's the final boss kind of yeah. thing in the movie. And yeah. that the scene is in a, a blend of abuse, right? Throwing things at her and the unconscious that she goes back underwater and the symbolism of her going underwater. Right. Yeah. Um, and saying that it's, it's a blend of those two things together. And so they, and, and they often accompany each other, you know, when you have uh, memories of abuse, for example, um, to find yourself falling back into that um, that place, right? I, don't, yeah. I mean, I don't know that she missed her dad. I mean, she had a picture of him on her mirror. Yeah, you know, That's I, a good I point. don't know that. I, yeah. I don't know that. Uh, um, and you know, and then that that was her dad, uh, from what I understand, standing there naked on the roof when they were pulling away, and then at the pool. At the very least, it was the one at the pool because she even said, "She said, what do you see?'" And she said, I don't want to tell you. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. definitely dad at the end. Because it was too hurtful. Which yeah. which also may play into the idea that it was there was abuse. I mean, and, and even loving the person in spite of that, especially a father, you know, to... And maybe because... It, I, I don't know. I mean, we... <laughs> maybe he was a junkie on drugs. I don't know. You know, he's, a, he's, make, he's making meth in the maybe, garage. I don't maybe know. he was addicted <laughs> to a video. <laughs> yeah. oh, a man. big file head. Horrible. Well, I mean, he was obviously, you know, risky business. I mean, he's standing on top of the house. How did that happen? And that's also, isn't that creepy too? Like the idea, like it's creepy. Yeah. I mean, you know, naked, naked. You see these, you know, people walking down the road, but here he is on top of the house. Whoa, bro. Them being naked really boosted the creep factor in this movie for me. Yeah. Even the, the old lady wasn't naked, but man, she was, she was creepy too. How come sometimes we're naked and how come uh, sometimes uh, they have clothes on? Or they're, half, or they're half naked with only one boob hanging out. Yeah, why not both boobs? <laughs> That's what I want to know. I don't know, man. What do you guys think about the clamshell phone? I, I wish it was real. Was, <laughs> I, I thought that that was really interesting because 
the first time I saw it, I couldn't figure out what era the movie was in because sometimes yeah. it looked like 50s or 60s, sometimes it looked like 80s. Yeah. And then this chick's got this clamshell thing, this e reader thing or whatever that I'd never seen before. And yeah. so it was like this weird out of all of this ambiguity of the of the of the era, all of a sudden you've got like this futuristic device that's not mm-hmm. talked about, but it's focused on a couple of times. I thought it was I thought it was cool. I like yeah. it. I th- and I think go go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say I think the uh, intention of it is to make you uh, uh, question what time it is, what what mm-hmm. what decade is set in because it's impossible to tell with that damn clam e reading yeah. device. And maybe it was just added to make the audience talk about it. Who knows? Well, that's maybe there's a uh, same guy that MJ Pack guy over at creepycatalog.com. He he says it has no time period, and he gives a list. And I thought about it, I'm like, man, I and I wondered about some of it, but he caught stuff I didn't. Um, everything on TV is vintage era cartoons and monster movies. Mm-hmm. There are TV, uh, the TVs are CRT units or rabbit ears with dials, even both, right? Where there was like two TVs, right? Mm-hmm. On top of each other. There's a stainless steel refrigerator, furniture, but there was wallpaper, right? And certain kinds of wallpaper. Yeah. There were cord phones. There were old made cards. Yeah. Right? That's, an old, that's old Real school. Old. Mm-hmm. There's a mixture of old and new cars. And this is what I thought was really cool. Uh, even the seasons are strange because on the one hand she's swimming and yet in not long after that, they're wearing heavy coats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What the hell? And so that? everything is, is jumbled in a way that's like, it's timeless. All of their clothes are timeless too. It, with the exception of like the girl's underwear, she had like uh, uh, some granny panties going on. Like when she's standing herself in the mirror. Yeah. She had a, a pair of underwear that a, a girl with that type of figure at that age Probably would not be caught dead wearing. Yeah, this <laughs> was it the scene at, at, at home in the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. When she's in the bathroom and that that kid's uh, doing his little peeping tom through the window on the roof, while she's in there, um, and somebody throws a ball at the at the window or something. Yeah, that startled me too. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, you know, and then I was expecting something big happening right then and it was one of those you know misdirections or what not misdirection but it's like you're anticipating something and then it doesn't it doesn't pan out and you're like oh okay the movie has good pace good pace why do you why do you think there's such division with this film i think most likely because maybe not a lot happens in it i mean it's, it's it's a lot of just uh oh shit a spooky uh Naked Filson is walking. Let's run away, and I think maybe that uh, doesn't sit right with everybody because they can't get into the mood of the movie. I mean, the movie is really big on mood, and if that does, if you can't get into that mood with the movie, you're going to be really bold. I think. Yeah, it it does have an elements. I don't know if I call it a slow burn movie, but it has elements of of that. Um, where nothing is happening. And I think maybe for people who don't really care for those kind of like, care for those kind of like, um, like indie uh, dialogue driven, you know, movies, like some of the stuff that, that, that we dig um, maybe I, I haven't really been able to figure it out because I, I have, I know some people that um, we have, you know, share a lot of the same movies in common uh, that we enjoy but then they'll just hate on this, like with a passion. They can't stand it. And I don't know. Person... When I find out someone doesn't like something I like, I usually just get uh, irrationally uh, upset. And I just think, well, what the fuck's wrong with you? And I just walk away. I can't fathom someone not liking something I like. That That's me when someone says that they hate uh, Kubrick's The Shining. Yeah, same. And then I get... Then I get uh, I, I mean, Tim Meyer, he's he he hates it and he prefer he he says that the uh the Mick Garris one is is superior. And the I fuck just wrong with that I man. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, Tim, but I, I think there may be a lot of division, man, because it, this may be the only movie that's ever been made where a girl farts. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. Yeah, and it, it, the way that it happened is hilarious. 
Yeah. I mean, she yeah. just, and so she, like, I got an idea. Up, and she just directs it right at him, you know? And I said, Whoa, <laughs> I don't know the last time I saw anything like that. Yeah. Doesn't she say, I've got an idea. And then she farts. She goes, I lost it or something. It got yeah, away. Yeah. It, it got, got away. away. Yeah. It got away. yeah. The, 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 the spookiest scene uh, for me um, was that tall dude in the hallway, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, uh, I don't get spooked that easy. If something's going to scare me, it's usually either has to do with um, like psychological stuff, like someone losing their mind like going crazy or schizophrenic type stuff or, or um, demon, demon possession type stuff, but everything else, nothing else really bothers me that much. But that dude in the hallway, man, I haven't felt that sensation in years. My, my heart felt like it and my stomach just felt like it all just, Oh man, dude. I mean, my heart jumped big mm-hmm. time when I saw that it was horrifying. I was not expecting that the way they did. It was so, so well done. Cause it was like a, it was like a, jump scare but not really he's good at making those like non unexpected jump skills in movies i don't know if you guys have seen his second movie no his his newest movie i think it's his old movie uh Andal the silver lake it's not even uh in this genre but there's a few is scenes it, yeah fucking is, till that the, is that the guy that lives in california and meets yep. the chick that moves in across the yep, yeah, that's okay. the one. yeah i want to see that so badly I that's and perfect. I didn't know they were connected until after I watched this, and it I was strange reviewing it. it. Yeah, doesn't. Yeah, that's yeah. the one with the dog barking stuff too, right? The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I found all the uh, dogs uh, barking stuff uh, pretty unsettling. Yeah, don't say too much, man, because I don't want to watch this. <laughs> so, uh, so at the end of that movie, yeah. I was surprised. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. What what other movie has he done, Max? Do you he, know? he did one I have not seen. It's called like the myth of the teenage sleepover, some shit like that. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen that one. I haven't seen it. Yeah, that's that's actually I think on our list, Chad. I, I think really? I have that on the 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 mega list, the canon, right? Of the all the movies that I said we should I put down and said these would be ones that might be fun to review and stuff like that. But that's one of them. Yeah, I liked the name of the title. I like the title too. Yeah. But I, I I had a question for you guys, man. The girl in the beginning. Um. Was she the girl in the picture with the guy? I forget his name, but the dude who played Kevin from the Fred series, <laughs> right? The the I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Fred, <laughs> the movie. Uh, yeah, I know what movie you're talking. Yeah, about. well, Kevin, the guy, the, the guy who had it in the beginning, right? Shit. That gives it to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Was the girl in the beginning? Was she the girl in the picture where they discovered, you know, it, uh, oh, I don't up know, in maybe. the room because he was with the girl. I think it, so. probably prob- it might be because she was killed, so it went after him. It yeah. went after him, yeah. Yeah, I took it to be that she was the chain above Jay, so she died, and then Jay. Be interesting to see who uh, who uh, began this whole mess. Probably some fucking asshole. I don't know. Do Do you think that it would warrant uh, a decent sequel? Sequel? Do you think something cool could be done? <sighs> no. Mm. Yeah, no, no. I I think what I like a lot about this movie is the uh, how much we don't know, and I yeah. think it would ruin it if we knew the mystery behind it. That's true. Um, I don't know that I would. I was thinking about it today. Um, about you know, what, usually I'm not big on sequels. If something is like just you know like Hereditary too, I don't want to see that. Just yeah. leave it alone and, and give us something else that's super original and intelligent. But I was thinking about it today. I was like, would a sequel work? And I, I wouldn't hate the idea as yeah. long as they pulled it off. But what you just said, I don't want things explained to me. I, I you know, I'm a big phantasm fan and, and I like all of the movies, but I could have, they're not that great, but I love the first one. But the reason why I don't like the other ones is because then they start to explain the tall man and the evil Jawas and where everything came from and how it started. And the, 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 the first one is just so all over the place and yeah. there's so many questions that you have and none of them are answered. And that's the way I like it. Look at how bad the uh, Halloween franchise got once they began trying to explain everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's kind of, it's kind of one of these things like, cause it never even explains like if there's more than one of these, 
Like, did they just have the unlucky roll of the dice? Right. <laughs> and there's like one monster that's coming after everybody, you know, you're coming after this line of people. Or is it like, you know, because it's, it's not everybody, it seems. It seems as though it's not, it, you know, it's not applying to every single person. Otherwise, everybody be running out of the, the theater. <laughs> everybody be scared to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, and so it, it would be, you know, that would be tough. But even the, the, uh, hereditary two when you mentioned that i was i was thinking you know i can imagine hereditary two being almost like because you, you get to that place at the end right where it, it's it tells it's a, it's a tell-all it says what what this is about yeah and it would seem like the second one would almost have to be like that blair witch two that it's not it's not the same thing because yeah. you've already gone past that right you've You're already got using past the name yeah, you're, you're just you're using the name and now it's a new, a brand new thing. And it, you know, I just, I can't imagine. And same thing with this, you know, I even liked, and I, I know people, there were certain people that were like, Oh, the ending to it follows is garbage. I liked it. Oh, I yeah. loved it. Yeah, I yeah. loved it. Yeah. But then, you know, Cause you assume that that's the monster, you, you know, and that even know. though they're together and they've, they've, they think they've figured it out, right. The monogamy mm -hmm. thing that it's still a specter. Right. It's still something that could come up on both of them. And they think we got two eyes on this. We were, we're better together. We're like helpmates together. But yet at the same time, it can still take you off guard. In fact, it's, it's, if it's the death analogy, then, uh, or metaphor, then that's, it's going to get them no matter what. I have a question. So the way I've always taken the ending is the kid sleeps with a prostitute to pass it on. So you think that he just kept it and we'll just passing it back and forth? Yeah. I I got the impression that he was contemplating sleep with yeah, the prostitute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that at the end, one of them had it and they were just gonna well, be a team, be a team and look yeah. out for each other. Because I've been taking this the, the wrong way, I guess, because I always thought, okay, he went and uh, passed it on to this prostitute, and now the uh, the two leads will just gonna walk away quietly and uh be together but in the background someone's following them i only i i took that to mean that the prostitute died <laughs> it's possible right yeah it's possible it's then possible that was a, then that was a, a wasted night i guess wasted money for that poor kid yeah, yeah. wasted money wasted night those yeah, yeah i think, I don't I think know. it's one of those things like you know um you know once you've done that you know the in, in your he's processing mortality and he's processing like, what is this all about and everything? And man, this monster's coming after me and, and maybe I should just, you know, throw myself at this, right. Throwing those pearls to pigs in a way. And he drives by. And I think that seeing them turn and like they turn back around as he passes them. It, it, to me, it gave me the impression that he did not, that it was a something he thought of doing for whatever reason. Yeah. Right but that he mm -hmm. thought of doing it, but chose not to. And instead the two of them being together and yeah. even weren't they were, 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 wasn't white, like a dominant color. There was, it was a unique thing. Both of them are kind of wearing this white. I don't remember. I don't yeah. Know. Oh, you mean like a purity type thing? Like, like purity, almost like almost marital. Yeah. And they're holding hands and they're like, walking, walking through the street and kind of, you know, middle America, there's people in the yard and stuff. And so like, yeah, you know, it makes yeah, sense. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think he, I, I got the impression too, just exactly what you said that that he realized, yeah, I could do this, but mm -hmm. my being with her instead of kind of like like having some kind of like um, moral you know, yeah. issue with it, yeah, you know, yeah. and that we'll just stick it out. But yeah, I, I think that the people that don't like the ending um, are probably people who I'm assuming like things you know, maybe spelled out for them. I'm just the opposite, man. If, if something is like, if I turn the movie off or the movie ends, the credits going and I, and I have questions that aren't answered or I'm forced to kind of make up my own mind about things and interpret it. That's what I love. Yeah. It's a great ending. Do you guys think this movie is a, a secret, a film adaptation of those uh, old emails? We would have, we would get those spam emails saying, uh, passes on to five people. <laughs> the old would die. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise you're dead. <laughs> yeah. I think it might be. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think you might owe someone some money. I don't know. 
Yeah. yeah. I think I, I really do think it's about like a, <laughs> a relationship dynamic to it. I, you know, I, and even, even down to where the one guy, you know, he, he's, he's pitching himself as, you know, he's drumming up, well, this is where we kissed, you know, and, and I really liked you. And he's trying to kind of, you know, he's, he's kind of wiggling his way in, but he's also attracted by the feet. Okay. He see, he sees the little toes wiggling when you're on the couch together. Right. So he's maybe got a little bit of a fetish a little bit, but he thinks she's hot. Right. And she's, yeah, um, I don't think I don't think that was a fetish. I think it was one of those moments where like you're in the movie theater with a girl and you've never touched before hands and, and, and then you're sitting there. Your palm is just sweaty. You're can't even focus on the movie because your hand or your knee is so close to this chicks. And then eventually 45 minutes in, maybe you guys are touching a little bit skin. And then by the end of the movie, you're holding hands. That's how I looked at it. Like, yeah, that, that kind of like easing is, you know, she moved her foot even closer. This might mean something. Yeah. If you, you get that. It's like the vibe, right? There, there's energy. <laughs> it's yeah. You're looking yeah. at that and going, Ugh, and all of a sudden there's hormones flying and everything. But when, when he's confused, you know, why were you with him? I mean, that's actually a very realistic conversation that people would have. Like if you, uh, someone's in love, you know, a guy's in love with a girl and she, you know, she ends up being with this guy. He's uh, tall and kind of brave a little bit. He's, you know, kind of a rebel or whatever. And this feeling of why are you with him? You know, and even the jealousy of knowing that that happened mm -hmm. uh, and seeing small little gestures of affection to to be jealous of that. And to see that on the one hand, she said, you know, that she thought he wouldn't be afraid. That's a common thing when in the mating process that people say partnering up and stuff to be like, well, this person is big and strong, right? That's mm -hmm. an old fashioned oog oog maybe kind of way with this, right? Nerddom has changed this a little um, yeah. different strength, but, but he, the, his strength ends up being a kind of weakness as well, right? So his strengths, not only that he's tall and handsome and that he's, he's brave and stuff, it ends up being something that he, it, it, it blinds him. And he ends up getting slaughtered in a crazy way. Um, gets slaughtered in that way. <laughs> it was disgusting. And she ends up saying, I made a mistake about this. And, and she ends up realizing that there's something valuable and secure about being with the person that, as described earlier, there's a, a long lasting, deep rooted connection that may have been overlooked for various things, you know, priorities that maybe weren't in the right place. But then in the end to say, look, I'm actually, this is okay. And I, in fact, yeah. I could be happy with this and maybe even more secure in this way. And so, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe the, that's not plus what it that, was about, but I said, it's all there. Plus that guy, the, the, uh, <clears throat> the one she slept with originally, he was, uh, his eyes were everywhere. I mean, he didn't care who he slept with. There were, there were two other times that he, you know, he was staring at that chick's legs the one yeah. with the glasses, the one that looked kind of maybe younger. And then another point when the, they were at the lake and he was checking out the the other chick while she was in her bathing suit. And you know, he was just out for anybody. And then he ends up sleeping with his mom, kind of. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and dude, even after they did it, even after that, it shows him in the cafeteria. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Away from her, and he's got like a totally flirting, man. Totally, yeah. you know, so again man i mean those are these are like stereotypical characters in life that we can yeah. point to and say why why did that girl like this guy you know the jock or whatever the rebel or you yeah. know why not me and well you're my we're friends kind of thing you, you know you're friend zoned um well yeah we go back a long ways yeah we were we had playful little kiss things you know but i don't think of it the same way but in the end it ended up being the friend that made the partner and i i I don't know. I thought it was a good moral. In fact, I mean, it, <laughs> people might, a lot of listeners might say, that's a lot of stuff about sex in this movie. So, yeah, it is, it, you know, it plays a big role, obviously. <laughs> so, it's the, the uh, yeah. activation of the monster. <laughs> um, but at the same time, someone could actually take this and say, look, there's actually kind of a moral to the story in a way. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's throw out some numbers as far as like uh, ratings. I, it's, it's just an easy five stars for me. Are we doing five out of five? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm um, same with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, for me, I, I guess I would look at it and say, you know, I've I've read criticisms like the boat scene. Was she with them or not? Or how would you know? How would you ever know that it can go all the way back to the beginning? You know, how would you even know that? Um, why not leave town, Bolivia, and go? You know, be with some rando or whatever. 
so there are certain things, and and there was kind of the Scooby Doo, you know, feel a little bit to the idea of, hey, I've got an idea, gang, let's go to this place that's really nostalgic and sentimental, and we're gonna do this crazy trick of throwing. But it was cool because it backfired. It yeah. it yeah, it backfired. But even in spite of those things in that movie, I would still give it a five. In fact, it probably of all the movies we've watched so far, um, you know, because we're we're doing a whole bunch of these scary movies. Uh, the the idea is Chad wants to traumatize me <laughs> even worse than I already am, and he's like, "You're going to endure it." That that um, watching these, it's by it's my favorite one for for so many reasons, like the uh, the cinematography in it. The music, and it's just, it's almost unrivaled. Like, I, I like, of course, uh, The Thing, Halloween, movies like that. But this one, I mean, it's just, uh, and especially with the monster scenes. And I, I loved hearing the interview um, with, uh, what's his name, Disaster Piece. I loved <laughs> the interview with him. I think it's on Voodoo. Um, they have this where they talk to him about it and w- what he did. And he said that, there's like a, a really sharp difference. So if you ever hear a certain sound to the music, right, kind of like a synth synth wave sound or whatever that's a little bit eerie, that that's just normal life. So it's always a little bit unsettling, a little bit, but it also can be calming. Whereas whenever there was a monster, it was super, super, um, a lot of dissonant noises, a lot of layers of sounds and it was very intense, chaotic, dun, yeah. dun, 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 you know, really intense. And I just, it was brilliant. So I thought the movie is awesome. You know, they're in fact, for being related to sexual mm-hmm. stuff, apart from the nude scenes of the monsters, um, it doesn't consume a significant amount of the movie. Um, and so, yeah, I, I give it a five. I loved the film and, uh, I love talking about it. I'm really glad, Max, that you uh, that you chose this movie, man. Hell yeah, I'm glad you liked it. I, uh, I'm always happy when someone enjoys It Follows. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Yeah. So, Chad, now that we've talked about this, right, Max brought up an amazing movie. We're both very grateful that he chose this one. It's been a great time talking to him. But I know that leading up to this, you know, you, you've done a lot of deep breathing, you know, uh, maybe even like a century ride on a bike or something. You know, you you put a lot of time and energy into this, a lot of focus. Sage um, burning. Sage, of course, you're burning <laughs> burning the sage around the house. <laughs> it might work, you know. <laughs> you know, but but thinking about the moral of this, right? The grand, the grand, the big picture, what this is really, really about, and what you glean from this to to pass on, not only to our listeners, but even to their children and their children's children, future generations. What is that moral, Chad? Again, uh, it's less of a moral, I think, and more of an observation. Um, you know, sometimes you watch a movie and you think, man, I would, I would have handled that situation so differently. Like, like if Bigfoot watched Into the Wild, he'd say, dude, don't, don't eat those berries. And, <laughs> you know, and he'd know how to survive out there with no problem. I mean, look at how long it's been, you know, and he's still kicking. So, yeah. <laughs> So looking back at my life, when I was this, these kids' age, um, I would have had that STD for about a half a day before it was gone. <laughs> and I wouldn't even know I had it. Um, <laughs> and I, I suppose back then I was considered, you know, high risk for STDs, but, but not this one. That one I would have easily gotten rid of. That's a powerful lesson. Yeah, powerful lesson. I, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> Bigfoot. Like there's just one, <laughs> there's just one dude. It's like, you know, it's just, it's not like a, a species dude. It's like one guy. <laughs> He's been around dude for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's true. Yeah. 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 The, the, the Bigfoot. The yeah. Bigfoot. The Bigfoot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, so Max, what do you got coming out? Like uh, anything that you can share or um, whether it be in a story in an anthology that you come coming out or your, your open call or, yeah, um, I have nothing in my own writing coming out anytime soon, but I am uh, about to release a new novella by Paul Michael Andelson called uh, Stand Alone, and that is a novella about uh, a team of uh, slasholds uh, whose job is to go and kill. They will assign the kill. It's kind of like a 
Cabin in the Woods meets uh, Monsters, Inc. in a strange way. Mm-hmm. So that's coming out uh, next Monday. So it will probably be out by the time this goes live. For uh, sure. And I'm seeking uh, submissions for a new anthology called Lost Contact. Uh, you, you just uh, got a perpetual motion. Nope, that's not it. You can go to perpetualpublishing.com and you can find the uh, guidelines on the website. Great. Yeah, be sure to check out uh, all of Max's stuff. Go to his, you know, submit to the, you're still doing the Dark Moon, right? I Project. am. Yeah, indeed. And, you got open calls for that? Is it invite? That's open call, isn't it? Usually? Yeah, it's open. Yeah, we do that one through uh, Submittable. And once we reach uh, 100 submissions every month, it shuts down automatically. So if you go to the page and it says no open calls, just come back uh, next month. Okay. Yeah, and make Great. sure to check out uh, all of our listeners. Check out Ghoulish. You know, I'm, I'm right now. Yes, it's a great podcast. I'm... Very Max is very, uh, he's a funny host. And, you said, and yeah. you said ghoulish wrong. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, so sorry. Ghoulish. I don't know if I'm not. even saying it right then. <laughs> it's close. That was, that, 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 was, that was the Batman rendition. That was the ghoulish. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm ghoulish. Yeah. No, g- uh, ghoulish. And I'm also uh, checking out because I've. this is me. This is like my Wizard of Oz moment for you there, Max. I've never. I don't think I've ever seen the entirety of The Living Dead. Oh, my God. Yeah. Night of the Living Dead? Either one. Oh, the living is the living dead. Uh, is that the TV show? Uh, oh, you mean the walking no. dead? No, oh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over the place, man. No, the living dead. I'm looking at the episode 51 with Daniel Krause. Oh, that's a book that just came that's out. That's a book. Yeah. Well, of course. Well, that's why I've never George seen it all the way through. I'm thinking night of the living dead and I got it yeah. mixed up. Yeah, I've never seen Night of the Living Dead, but anyway, I'll still listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> it's on, it's the on director the of Night of the Living Dead, Night of the Living Dead, wrote co-wrote that book yeah. that Max put up, and that guy okay. was on his. So you got it close enough. I'm close yeah. enough, man. Yeah, I'm. I'm obviously the newbie. I mean, I'm just and like I, putting it out there to everybody, saying, "Look at me, <laughs> rookie to this." <laughs> and Night of the Living Dead is a yeah. one hell of a movie. Yeah. Yes. And it's yeah. it calls for some good. Uh, there's some social commentary in there, make it for a good discussion, I think. Absolutely, very very good movie. Who knows where we'd be with our zombie films if it wasn't for Romero and his uh, his vision with that. It breaks my heart, Chad. But it's the end, dude. Yes, it and is. if people yeah. want to stalk us and 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 be supportive and help us sleep at night with their validation, what? How can they do that? Oh, all over the place. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and now YouTube at Paleo Cheese. Okay. And that's with a Z, right? And it's going to be great because now it's going to be showing up in search engines even better and related videos and suggested videos and stuff like that. And so it's going to be a whole bunch of fun, but make sure to check us out there on all of those different platforms. You can email us at paleocheese at gmail.com. And, of course, find our podcast if you like just listening. And we encourage you, in fact, to to play it at work. Right? We think all your – everybody else is going to love to hear conversation like this, especially with Max. Right? It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Uh, you know, maybe if you're in a library with all of the uh, handicapped kids coming in for a special, <laughs> turn it up really loud and, uh, and see if they love the show. And you can find that on Spotify, on Acast, iTunes, you name it, we're on there. And so make sure to check all of that out. Of course, once again, paleo cheese, and that's spelled with a Z.